Hello friends from Emmanuel. Happy Wednesday. It's Angie and it's time for another devotion for our youth. We always start with a time of prayer and today I invite you to participate in a prayer called a release prayer. It may seem familiar. We've done it before. To engage in this type of a prayer, I invite you to, to tense up all the muscles of your body. So your fists are clenched, your shoulders are tight, all those muscles are all tensed up. And as you're in that position, take a moment in prayer with God and talk to him about, about those things that are causing you that tension and frustration in your life. And as you're having those moments of prayer, slowly begin to release all that tension in your muscles. The shoulders come down, all of your body is relaxed, and your fists slowly unclench and are open in your lap. And when you get to that place, talk to God a bit about how you are here now. You are present in this moment. You are open and ready and willing to receive any guidance he is going to offer you during this time of devotion. I invite you to pause the video, take a moment in prayer, and when you are finished, you can press play, and I'll be with you for the rest of our time together. Today, our, for, during our devotion, I'd like to talk to you a little bit about self-control. Self-control is something that is within all of us. But like any skill or talent or gift that is within us, it takes um, nurturing to help it grow and to use it to its fullest. Today I'd like to read to you from 2 Peter chapter 1, verses 1 through 9 to kind of set the stage for the rest of our, our devotion. From Simon Peter, a servant and apostle of Jesus Christ, to everyone who shares with us in the privilege of believing that our God and Savior Jesus Christ will do what is just and fair. I pray that God will be kind to you and will let you live in perfect peace. May you keep learning more and more about God and our Lord Jesus. We have everything we need to live a life that pleases God. It was all given to us by God's own power when we learned that he had invited us to share in his wonderful goodness. God made great and marvelous promises so that his nature would become part of us. Then we could escape our evil desires and the corrupt influences of this world. Do your best to improve your faith. You can do this by adding goodness, understanding, self-control, patience, devotion to God, concern for others, and love. If you keep growing in this way, it will show that what you know about our Lord Jesus Christ has made your lives useful and meaningful. But if you don't grow, you are like someone who is nearsighted or blind, and you have forgotten that your past sins are forgiven. So God has given us the gift of self-control. And if we're not using it, it is completely ineffective. And we're not um, showing God how much we appreciate those gifts that he has given us. He's telling us to use them and to let those gifts grow and to let them shine. Like any skill or talent though, you have to come up with a plan. If you want to improve, you come up with a plan for how you can improve. So I today would like to talk to you about five steps that you can take to improve self-control in your life. We all need to use self-control better, whether, whether it's using better self-control in the words that come out of our mouths, the thoughts that enter our head, the way we carry ourselves, the way we um, uh, carry our body and interact with other people. And we all could probably use more self-control in the choices that we make, especially as a young person. You are faced with some really tough choices every day. There are things that you can say and do or choices you can make for activities that might seem tempting and fun and cool and neat, but you know that they're not the right choice. So here's an action plan, five steps you can take to exercise better self-control in your life and improve in that, in that gift that God has given you. Step one, I want you to think of a place, an area of your life, an area of your spiritual life where you could use more self-control. Think of an area where you could use more self-control in your life. Step two, do you know someone who lives a life that shows really strong self-control? Think of that person and take some notes on things that they do and ways that they act and, and how they carry themselves and take some notes and kind of let them be a role model for you. Step three, come up with a plan. So think about that person, 
that you can use as a role model for self-control and come up with a plan for how you can incorporate some of the ways that they live their lives into your own life. Come up with a plan for how that might look for you. Step four, can you think of someone that you could talk to about your plan? Someone who will hold you accountable. Someone who will be honest with you if they think you're not doing such a great job of improving in this area. Who is that person? Share your plan with them. And then step five is to pray. Let God know that you have a plan for improvement and tell him that you're ready to receive any guidance he has for you and how you can continue to cultivate and nurture the gift of self-control to use it to its fullest. You will never arrive. There's never a moment where you can think, I did it, I have complete self-control. No one's there yet. But it's important that we acknowledge our shortcomings and then we come up with plans for how to improve. So I invite you to come up with a plan, share it with someone, talk to God about it, and see how it goes. You can always go back and revisit these steps to continue to improve and tweak your plan and adjust or say this isn't working at all and maybe go completely back to the drawing board. That's our responsibility, is to think about those gifts that God has given to us and how we nurture and grow them to be just like him, imitating Christ together. Have a great week.